Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the motion to exempt taxes on imports of personal items, food, clothing, toys, and other household consumables for the people of St. Lucia. And I do so understanding that this is a time that the people of Grosile look forward to having a festive season and enjoying the company of friends and family. Mr. Speaker, I sat and I listened attentively to some of the statements made by the former Prime Minister and member for Miku South. And I started to wonder whether or not this individual was not a sitting Prime Minister for five years. And if this was not the Prime Minister that went historically into a sixth year in this country, and on not one occasion, no matter what the circumstance was, ever suggested for a moment extending this relief through June. Not once, never, not even a consideration. And I sat down and I pondered on where we are as a country, and I know people forget very, very quickly. And so I am duty bound to remind them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so much conversation about extending that time, which would mean, for sure, there are cost implications. So much consideration and conversation about removing levy, removing all the, the hard considered, the hardly considered and discussed taxes that we as a government know we need to move this country forward in a safe, secure, and healthy manner. But Mr. Speaker, I thought about how we as a government could have moved this country so much further had we not have the election result of 2016. I remember the member for Castries is always saying elections matter. And for some reason, all of a sudden, there is a complete lack of discussion about what happened during that period. Mr. Speaker, here are some of the facts. If, at the end of the day, the member for Miku South can give us the hundreds of millions spent on DFCs during that final year of his administration, then maybe we can consider extending these concessions to beyond. Because had he been a responsible prime minister, we would have never been in the position we found ourselves in 2021 as a new government. Facts. Mr. Speaker, he can consider to also give us back the millions on vaccines that he so hastily decided that he was going to run towards, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, he can also decide to give us back the $32 million given to Lockerbie. $32 million, Mr. Speaker, under his watch. That, Mr. Speaker, with half of that, I would have been able to develop our infrastructure, our sporting infrastructure, in a safe and healthy way, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, we cannot right now ignore a lot of the facts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, he can decide that perhaps if we got the 20 million spent on less than one and a half mile of roads in Rodney Bay, Mr. Speaker, if as a financier or the Minister of Finance that horrible decision was not taken 
on a piece of road, no designs, Mr. Speaker. Wastage, start, stop, roundabout here, roundabout there. No, take it out, Mr. Speaker. Wastage during that period. Perhaps, Mr. Speaker, we could have extended from June and beyond, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when you look at some of what happened, Mr. Speaker, millions and millions spent in rent. Millions. Government agencies, rentals to familiar, familiar individuals with familiar last names, Mr. Speaker, raking up millions in rent in this country, Mr. Speaker, perhaps we could have considered extending the barrel, con the, the barrel con um, um, concessions to later, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are not going to forget the millions of dollars spent on traveling, Mr. Speaker, the millions of dollars spent on air conditioning, Mr. Speaker, being a vehicle, a vehicle on for the entire day until he returns to it, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, wastage in this great land, Mr. Speaker, wastage. And now we are talking about, oh, if I was there, would have extended it until June. You didn't hear it? <laughs> And Mr. Speaker, we sit down and it's like all of a sudden, a lot of things did not happen. And we're talking about a match, a M-A-T-C-H, a match, Mr. Speaker, to vaguely people, as the member for Castries East would say, and I hope I can borrow it, flashing mirrors, Mr. Speaker, as if our people are so 43 percenters and we do not understand the nature of what we felt this government and what we have done to stabilize the economy and set us on the right track. And so, Mr. Speaker, we've done what we had to do. And Mr. Speaker, I can go on and on. Perhaps if you gave us the $600,000 spent on the week leading up to an election, perhaps spending on electioneering, Mr. Speaker, perhaps we would have been able to extend and do more, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, $300,000 spent on medals during COVID-19, Mr. Speaker. Perhaps if we had a more responsible government during that time, <laughs> a more responsible government at that time, we would have been better off today. Mr. Speaker, if we had not spent millions and millions on horse racing, Mr. Speaker, horses, Mr. Speaker, before people, perhaps would have been in a better position. But Mr. Speaker, the member for Castries East has been stout and he has put this great nation on the right path. And that is an absolute fact, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I listened attentively, Mr. Speaker, and I thought about water for a little bit, Mr. Speaker, and I thought about millions of dollars, Mr. Speaker, that were earmarked for this silting a dam, Mr. Speaker. You don't want to hear it? You don't want to hear the facts? Millions of dollars that were earmarked for this silting a dam during his time, Mr. Speaker. And yet still, Mr. Speaker, wastage, 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 Mr. Speaker. Our people will not forget Madi Pwete. Mr. Speaker, I listened to the member also speak about being so into the, the poor of this country, Mr. Speaker. And we've heard so much conversation about racism in this country, Mr. Speaker, all of a sudden, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I remember a statement made that I'd be very concerned after the election, an individual indicating that his very class did not vote for him, Mr. Speaker. I said, Kisa. So we speak so much about racism when in many minds we live in a very classic, classist society. And we probably, as a country, need to have a discussion on classism. Because at the end of the day, we have to figure out what was going on during this administration that a particular class was supposed to have supported a particular individual. And we come and all of a sudden we posture and posture 
and posture, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I was very surprised that the member for Denry North did not mention, Mr. Speaker, in his analysis of how hypocritical it is for this member to speak about doing things for the less fortunate. He did not mention Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker. And so I have to remind St. Lucia that this individual, who's not from a well-off family, who had just about 100 US, just admitted to her for a stipend to take care of herself, Mr. Speaker, withdrawn from her, Mr. Speaker, discontinued, Mr. Speaker, and today, we are talking about the poor, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this was the same government, Mr. Speaker, that I remember sitting at home and thinking that this parliament session will not end at one o'clock in the morning, came to this honorable house to propose taxes on pudding, Mr. Speaker. On charcoal, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, this former leader has selective amnesia, Mr. Speaker. Because at um, the end of the day, member for you listen and you... Sir, member for Miku South, I have been very lenient in the cross talk, but it's getting excessive and out of hand. So please allow the member to continue. Please go ahead, member for Grosley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll not be deterred, Mr. Speaker. I'll not be deterred because the facts are facts, and facts are not what you believe them to be. They are facts, Mr. Speaker. This is the same former Prime Minister who came into this House to propose taxation on people that were fishermen, Mr. Speaker. They are not millionaires. Propose taxation on charcoal, on pudding, Mr. Speaker. And today, all of a sudden, you come to this house and you speak about poor people. I couldn't believe that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I, I will I will head soon. Mr. Speaker, this is the same individual who oversaw a minister for social transformation, get rid of nice workers, and come on national TV and say 90% of them were SLP, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, nice workers in the elderly care program, Mr. Speaker, none of them are wealthy. And he, at that time, said nothing. Nothing, Mr. Speaker. And you want to talk about the poor? Give me a break. Unbelievable, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is the same man during COVID-19, Mr. Speaker. We saw unequal distribution of the resources of this country as we've never seen before. We saw people that were struggling, but on the opposition side, bypassed on a road when groceries were being distributed, Mr. Speaker. St. Lucians, can you remember? It's not too long ago. Bypass people in Grosile, in Bexo, in Ancillary that were not supporters of the United Workers' Party and distributed the bags to supporters, Mr. Speaker. And you want to come to this honorable house today and talk about the poor? If I was the member for Chozel, I would nudge him and tell him, Professor, I'm not sure you would understand, but I would tell him, don't do that. Don't go there. To quote the member from Soufred, don't go there. <laughs> Your track record is horrible as it pertains to dealing with the poor people of this country. And so, Mr. Speaker, we know that as a government, we are not alone in this global village. It's a fact. There is not one country in this world who is not experiencing tough times as a result of inflation. Not one, Mr. Speaker. So to use this to play on the minds of individuals and to order a match, knowing full well that not one country in this world currently has it easy, is not just hypocrisy. It's not hypocritical only. It's desperate, Mr. Speaker. This is desperation. Mr. Speaker, I'll be paying very close attention, Mr. Speaker. Very close attention to what is being said in all social media and on television. Because as the Prime Minister said, there is this attempt 
to just lie and deceive our people. And some of them may fall prey to it, but the vast majority know that this government is genuine about putting the people first. And so, my people of Grosley, my people of Rodney Bay, Rodney Heights, my people of Corinth, Monier, Bonte, that for years have been the major contributors, the major taxpayers in Cap Estate and Maricil and all of those areas, that with this government, we have a proper allocation and responsible governance of your taxes. Now is not the time to cower to their devices. We need to, as a government, continue to function and continue to be responsible about what we say and continue to help our people in an honest way. Thank you so much.